If you fall into this Illinois River near Chicago, you have a greater than 50% chance of being electrocuted and dying, which is somehow better odds than if a Packers fan attends a game at Soldier Field. This is due to an interstate-wide effort to protect the Great Lakes from an invasive species that wipes out nearly 75% of the biomass it encounters. Here's why Illinois is electrifying this river. For most of its history, the Mississippi Waterway supported a vibrant ecosystem of many different types of fish and plants. That is, until humans got involved. In 1963, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources began to import Asian carp to help clean up water treatment facilities. Asian carp are massive fish, with some types spanning up to 4 feet and weighing 75 pounds. These fish also eat up to 20% of their body weight a day in algae, plankton, and chemicals. So the idea was to allow them to feed on what the facilities wanted to remove. If you're concerned about the potential for fish the size of an average 10-year-old boy to become invasive, not to fear. Brian Shonung, program manager at the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, stated that the belief at the time was, quote, there was no way these fish could reproduce in this environment. Safe to say the carp took that one personally. In the early 1970s, flooding transferred thousands of imported carp from the facilities into tributaries of the Mississippi. Theories were quickly proven incorrect as the Asian carp had no problems reproducing and their population drastically exploded. While there's no official estimate, it is believed that there are millions of Asian carp in U.S. waters, and at times they have totaled 90% of the fish population in certain areas. Not only do they destroy the environment and lower water quality, they can also injure humans. Silver carp in particular are known to jump as high as 10 feet out of the water, and their impact is equivalent to being hit by a bowling ball, resulting in broken arms and jaws. Considering their detrimental impact, it is imperative that the carp remain out of the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes generate between $14 billion and $42 billion a year in boating, fishing, and other recreation, in addition to containing about 20% of the world's surface freshwater. It is not an exaggeration to say that Asian carp entering the Great Lakes is an existential threat to the United States. Fortunately, there is no evidence of a reproducing population of carp in any of the lakes, largely due to a massive effort by numerous state governments and the federal government to restrict carp movement in the early 2000s. Between 2002 and 2011, the Army Corps of Engineers constructed three electric barriers on the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal designed to prevent the carp from entering Lake Michigan. Multiple grids of electrodes issue 2.3 volts per inch every 2.5 milliseconds, which paralyzes the fish and prevents it from moving through the barrier. The bigger the fish, the more effective the electric shock, which is important considering the large size of carp. These barriers were thought to be almost 100% effective until something seemingly impossible happened. On June 22, 2017, a silver carp was caught just 9 miles from Lake Michigan, meaning this carp managed to withstand the shock and swim past the barriers. Shortly after, the Army Corps of Engineers proposed the $1.2 billion Brandon Road Inner Basin Project to further prevent upstream movement into the Great Lakes. The pre-construction engineering and design started on December 29, 2020, and on July 1, 2024, the project was approved for construction. Let us introduce the new multi-stage gauntlet designed to break an ambitious carp spirit. Near the entrance of the lock's main channel, there is a thick curtain of air bubbles and underwater speakers that blast noises at high frequencies, driving carp away. Past the minefield of speakers, there is a re-engineered channel for several hundred yards that will basically be a concrete box void of anything resembling a fish habitat. Next, there is a larger electric array that will cause approaching fish to tingle unpleasantly and if they keep going, be immobilized so they can't swim against the current. On the off chance that a few fish make it into the lock itself, there is a second larger acoustic array and a flushing lock that physically pushes even the tiniest organisms back downstream. Finally, if a fish breaks past the gauntlet and continues to fight towards Lake Michigan, it will run into the original electric barriers 10 miles from Brandon Road Lock and Dam. If after all that, a carp pulls a David Goggins and somehow makes it through all five stages, you might as well just tip your hat. Only time will tell if these efforts will be successful, but with these measures in place, Asian carps certainly have their hands full. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to stay up to date with all things Health Geography Hub.